So, Avatar The Last Airbender. One of the best animated series, if not the best that have ever existed. Avatar The Legend of Aang is set in a world mostly inspired by East Asian culture and talks about the story of a boy named Aang that happens to be the Avatar, an ancient being reincarnated as a monk whose work is to be the bridge between the material and spiritual world and has the responsibility to maintain peace and balance along all four nations which are divided by element, water, earth, fire and air. Besides their amazing character development and story, this series made a deep investigation in Asian culture for their world building. Each nation has their unique traits, customs, culture, fashion and of course architecture style. What impacted me about the series was that the element they banned plays an important role in defining the characteristics of each nation. For example, firebenders are like fire itself. They are passionate, brave, a little bit hotheads and impulsive. Water benders are more emotional and are a more let it flow type of people. Their homes are impacted by the cold of the poles and their cities and settlements are shaped by masses of water, which reminds me of Zhejiang Water Town in China. Air nomads are simple people, detached from earthly matters. They live nomadic lifestyles, despite they build temples in the mountains. Earthbenders are tough and rigid, and tend to have immense, densely populated walled cities. Despite Avatar The Legend of Aang was created as a kid's show, it delves into more serious topics through the narrative. A better example of this is the live-action series that portrays more realistic situations than the animated show. It further showed us the world of Avatar with a more realistic tone in their story, hence in their architecture and urbanism. But both take inspiration from the same sources and match the same concepts. The story begins with Katara, a young waterbender and her brother, fishing for their small village located in the South Pole. And for destiny reasons, they stumbled upon a strange glacier where the Avatar hibernated for almost a hundred years. They rescue him and take him to their village. As a first glance, when Ang wakes up, we see the Wolf Cove settlement at the Southern Water Tribe, whose architecture resembles that from Inuit and Eskimo which are real-life Arctic communities. In the live action, they live in a type of igloo combined with an ice house. We see that the walls are made from ice. The structure is from animal bones and the roof is made from animal skin. On the other side, in the animated show, they live in tent houses made from animal skin and it is supported from driftwood. We can trace this last type of house from summer Eskimo tent houses, which were built out of driftwood into a conical or dome shape for use in the summer times as fishing or hunting lodges. These houses were temporary and easily constructed and moved when necessary. This architecture reflects the non-static essence of water. Their architecture was mutable, non-monolithic and ever-changing. Another important aspect of Southern Water Tribe architecture is their community hall that takes inspiration from Thiel culture, a predecessor of Inuit tribe. We can see this public building at this scene. It is a building made from a whale skeleton covered in animal skins. And maybe it is also semi-subterranean to protect themselves from the weather. Just like traditional Arctic architecture. But this building also reminds me of the Western Plazas, a word that comes from Spanish and means town square or central space of gathering. This building reinterprets the concept of plaza. It is a central space in the village where the community comes together to interact and decide important decisions. And due to its harsh weather conditions, it had to be a closed space contrary to the outdoor places we see in western cities. In this avatar world, there is also another water tribe, the northern one. This tribe, unlike the southern tribe, was never invaded by the Fire Nation, and its water bender were not extinct, which helped them to have a much greater society on architectural development than the southern water tribe. While the southern tribe 
seem more like a community in the age of hunters and gatherers, the northern tribe took advantage of the waterbenders to shape their cities through rivers that served as transportation within the city, and also allowed them to build tall structures, ice monuments and palaces through this extension of their bodies that is waterbending, such as the Rojil building of the northern tribe and their houses with shapes that are more similar to Chinese towns like Suzhang Water Town in China, which is considered the Venice of the East. For example, here we can see how this town has these channels that connect the city like roads. Also, this bridge that reminds me of this other bridge in the animated series. Another important thing to notice is that the Rogel Palace of the Northern Tribe is shaped like a pagoda. Pagodas, prevalent across Asia, are architectural wonders characterized by tiered structures and multiple eaves, originating from ancient stupas of India. Pagodas evolved as Buddhism spread throughout the continent, becoming integral to religious practices and cultural identity. Found in countries like Japan, China and Vietnam, these structures serve various functions, primarily as places of worship often located near Buddhist monasteries or temples. In China, they are referred to as Ta. The character Ta is used to denote pagodas have been in place for centuries, reflecting the enduring significance of these structures in Chinese society, offering insights into the diverse architectural traditions of different regions of Asia. Although the Earth Kingdom was visited by the Team Avatar in Book 2, both in this first season of the live-action series and in the animated series, we have a look at Omashu, an Earth Kingdom city ruled by a crazy king that happens to be one of Aang's best friends from a hundred years ago. As most Earth Kingdom important cities, Omashu is a walled city. We can see more types of these walled cities like the General Fong's fortress that exhibit architectural features reminiscent of ancient fortresses and citadels found across the globe. The imposing walls, strategic layout, and defensive structures bear similarities to historical strongholds like the Great Wall of China. The Earth Kingdom's architecture is characterized by its sturdy structures, earthy tones, and integration with nature, mirroring the values and character of its people. One notable aspect of Earth Kingdom architecture is its reliance on earthbending techniques to sculpt and shape the landscape, something that can be related in real life to Petra in Jordan or Mer architecture in Cambodia, whose architecture is monolithic and carved from stone. Moreover, the grandeur of Earth Kingdom palaces and temples draw parallels to real-life architectural marvels like the Forbidden City in Beijing, China. The Forbidden City's imposing walls, majestic gates, intricate palace halls mirror the opulence and grandiosity seen in Earth Kingdom capital such as Basingse. Additionally, the Earth Kingdom's smaller villages and rural settlements echo the simplicity and functionality of real-life vernacular architecture found in regions like rural China and Southeast Asia. For example, there is this house that I can stop thinking about when I think about my dream house. In chapter 2 of the Earth Book, Suko and Iro go to this house that has elements of traditional Japanese houses. They are made of wood, with sliding doors and screens to separate the spaces. But what I liked the most was the edge of the house that works under the Japanese concept of Engawa. Engawa verandas serve as open, timber-floored corridors or verandas encircling the exterior of the house. The word Engawa comes from Japanese. En means edge, and Gawa means side. A simple concept, yet so beautiful. And unlike verandas, they have almost a spiritual side. They represent the connection of the inside and the outside, the natural and the man-made. But their connection is harmonious, almost like it blurs the boundaries between the indoor and the outdoor spaces. It is this almost imperceptible step you take from the indoor living with the natural world. There are many types of engawa within Japanese architecture. Each type embodies unique characteristics tailored to different preferences and architectural styles, enriching the overall design and experience of Japanese homes and reflecting the country's deep appreciation for blending practicality with aesthetic, beauty, sensorial matters, and spirituality. Another striking aspect of Earth Kingdom architecture is its tendency for monolithic structures, exemplified by cities like Basingse. 
Basing says towering walls and expansive layout evoke comparisons to real-life urban enclaves such as the Kowloon Walled City in Hong Kong. Like Basing Se, the Kowloon City was characterized by its dense population and labyrinth alleyways, creating a sense of isolation and communal identity within its towering walls. Moreover, the concept of dense cities and city zoning is evident in both the Earth Kingdom and real life urban environments. Basing Se's distinct districts, each with its own purpose and atmosphere, mirror the zoning practices found in modern movement cities design. The upper ring, reserved for the city's elite, contrasts sharply with the lower ring, where the working class resides. This division created what I call cities within other cities, which can be seen in most cities in the world but is especially seen in Latin America, where inequality of resources is evident. If we relate it to the world of Avatar, while the richer areas of Basing Se have beautiful gardens, spacious houses, less noise, the poorer rings have no vegetation, they have less green space, there is more chaos, insecurity, less controlled, and it is much rockier and grey. That's it for this video. Hope you liked it. If you like it, please like and subscribe to my channel. In this way, you'll support my job so I can continue creating new videos. Let me know in the comments which avatar place do you like the most and which nation has the best architecture. Peace and see you in the next one.